A high protein diet has benefits when it comes to building muscle and losing fat. In one 2010 study, it was found that having a high protein intake resulted in more fat loss while also maintaining more muscle. So if changing your body composition is the goal, then paying attention to your protein intake is beneficial. But the topic of protein intake itself can be quite confusing. There are many myths when it comes to how much protein you should eat and how your body handles protein. So in today's video, I will discuss 5 common protein myths and will also give you simple recommendations to ensure you get enough protein per day. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate your support in reaching this milestone by hitting that subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up. And let's dive straight into the video by discussing myth number one. You will often hear people say protein shakes make you gain fat, especially when you eat a good amount of protein while not lifting weights. But if we look at actual research on the topic, we see that the opposite applies. Even when you don't lift weights, high protein diets tend to promote weight loss. In one study, it was found that when the participants increased their daily protein intake from 15 to 30% of their daily calorie intake, they lost weight without training. The researchers suggest this happened because the participants felt more satisfied when they had a higher protein intake and this resulted in them eating fewer calories per day. This finding is supported by other research too, showing that a high protein intake typically enhances your satiety and drives calorie intake down. And as we discussed in previous videos, when your calorie intake decreases, you enter a calorie deficit and fat loss happens. Now, it's worth mentioning not all types of protein are very filling. The reason protein tends to be satisfying is that lean protein sources tend to be high in volume and low in calories, so you can get a good bulk of food for not so many calories. But something like a protein shake for instance might not fill you up because the food volume is lower compared to a solid protein source. Another reason that protein doesn't make you fat and might even promote fat loss is that it has a higher thermic effect of food. Per 100 calories of protein that you consume, roughly 20 to 30 calories are burned for digestion. This is higher than the thermic effect of carbohydrates or fats. So when you increase your protein intake, you increase your daily energy expenditure and the increased calorie burn then helps you create a larger calorie deficit. So unless you go out of your way to have a large calorie surplus while eating a protein rich diet, protein won't make you gain fat. The next myth is about how much protein you need in a day. We now know there are benefits to a high protein diet, but that doesn't mean that you should stuff yourself with lots of protein rich foods. Oftentimes people tend to suggest the 1 gram per pound of your body weight protein goal, but for most people this is higher than necessary. A 2017 meta-analysis compiled the data from 49 studies on protein intake and muscle growth. The researchers found that a good protein target for muscle growth is at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight or roughly 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight. For an 80 kilogram individual, this is at least 130 grams of protein per day. For obese or overweight individuals, I would use your goal body weight rather than total body weight to calculate your protein needs. But if you're not used to high protein dieting, I want to emphasize that there's nothing wrong with starting at a slightly lower calorie goal like 1.2 or 1.4 grams per kilogram of your body weight. Research shows that an increase in protein intake as small as 5% helps with losing fat. So if a protein goal of at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight sounds intimidating, then start a bit lower and slowly build up your protein intake over time. The third myth is also a common one. You may have heard before about a supposed protein absorption limit per meal that happens to be around 30 grams. This protein limit does not make much sense since the small intestines, which is the place where most protein is absorbed, can absorb large amounts of nutrients. When muscle growth or muscle maintenance is the goal, the question is not whether your body can absorb the amount of protein you consume because your body can absorb a large amount of protein, but the right question to ask is how much protein can your body utilize per meal towards building muscle? And exactly how much protein your body can use per meal depends on a few variables. For instance, one study found that after a leg session, consuming 20 grams of protein in a meal was enough to maximize muscle protein synthesis. While in another study, after a full body workout, 40 grams of protein was needed to maximize muscle protein synthesis. Also, as you can imagine, the amount of protein a 200 pound bodybuilder needs per meal will be different than the needs of a 140 pound beginner trainee. So the idea that everyone should not eat more than 30 grams of protein per meal is a bit simplistic, it depends on the individual. And luckily we do have research that shows how we can determine how much protein you can eat in a meal on an individual basis. In a 2018 review paper, the researchers suggested having a per meal protein intake of 0.4 to 0.55 grams per kg of your body weight is a good aim. Let's take an 80 kilogram individual as an example again. If this person consumes 30 to 45 grams of protein per meal and has about 3 to 5 meals per day, this person will have enough protein per day to maximize muscle growth. 
The fourth myth is about the post-workout anabolic window. The idea that you need to have a protein shake right after training is a bit flawed. If we look at the research, we see that the anabolic window is actually more of a barn door. You don't have to be super strict with the timing of your protein shake by having it right after your workout. If it's for instance more practical for you to have a protein shake before training, that works as well. And a 2017 study supports this. The researchers divided 21 trained volunteers into two groups, a pre-workout protein group and a post-workout protein group. Both groups consumed a similar amount of protein per day, and after 10 weeks no significant differences in muscle growth or strength development were found. These findings are consistent with those of a similar 2006 study on untrained individuals. This adds to the body of literature showing that the anabolic window is not as strict as once believed. The bigger picture is consuming enough protein throughout the day rather than just before or after your training session. As a general rule of thumb, aim to have around 3-6 protein servings spread throughout the day if optimizing muscle growth is your goal, and as you can see that offers a lot of flexibility. You can let your personal schedule and preference decide when you eat your protein sources. And lastly, we have the myth that high protein diets are bad for your health, and specifically kidney and bone health are oftentimes mentioned. Let's start with kidney health. Because low protein diets are often used for treating existing kidney disease, many think that a high protein diet can cause some harmful effects on the kidneys. But in a 2018 review paper of 28 studies, the researchers measured the effects of a high protein diet on kidney health through the glomerular filtration rate. This tests how well your kidneys can filter blood and get rid of waste products, and no negative effects on kidney function were found. About bone health, a 2017 meta-analysis conducted by the National Osteoporosis Foundation gathered data from 36 studies. And the study found no adverse effects of a high protein intake on bone health. To provide more evidence, in a 2016 study, researchers made bodybuilders maintain a very high protein intake of 2.5 to 3.3 grams per kilogram of total body weight for 12 months. There was no negative effect in any health marker. So for those with no pre-existing health issues, a high protein intake is totally fine if you keep the protein reasonable and have still an overall nutritious diet. And this makes sense because protein is not a weird substance to the body. Protein is a structural nutrient, meaning that it's used for building up tissues in the body. As examples, your hair, skin, eyes, and of course muscle all contain protein. So if you have a high protein diet, you're not putting something unusual in your body. All in all, I hope this video gives you a better idea of how protein affects fat loss and takes away some of the confusion that comes with some of the myths that we discussed today. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in the next video.